What happens when you set out to do a list of two player only games and find that designers are never quite satisfied with providing an environment for just you and one other? I'm your narrator Benji and this is THE top 10 two player only ish games. So to the ground rules, because without them things could quickly get out of hand. Firstly the game should have been principally designed for two players. Now, some leeway will be given to games that have multiplayer variants mentioned in the rulebook, so long as everything on the face of things screams just the two of us. Secondly, I excluded any two-player card-based dueling games, like Magic the Gathering, and even games like Star Wars Destiny. Because, put simply, this list would have just become my top 10 favourite card games, and we can, of course, do that another time. But before we get to this list, I'm doing something I don't normally do, and that's plumbing some honourable mentions. The reason for this is that there are a grand total of four games on my list that have those multiplayer variants, and so for the purists out there, these four also make up my numbers 11 through 14, from left to right. Raptor is an asymmetrical game with dinosaurs and scientists that has a quite wonderful action and initiative bidding mechanism. Battletech just gets my nostalgia tingling, big bad robots shooting 10 bells out of each other. Oh, and it has hexes. Seven Wonders Duel is the two player distillation of the classic drafting game. And Hero Realms, which could easily be its sci-fi counterpart Star Realms, is classic 1v1 pure deck building. So whilst that's your 14 th through 11, we are supposed to be here to count from 10 to 1. Number 10, Dice Throne. Yahtzee meets poker and puts on pseudo-fantasy 1v1 clothes. There's just something that draws me to the production and theme of this game. Yes, okay, I'm seriously skirting around the boundary of my own rules here. Is this board gamey enough to distinguish itself from the aforementioned Star Wars Destiny? I believe so. Is it not just as fun playing a 3 for all or 2 versus 2? Again, not in my humble opinion. That being said, there's something quite enjoyable indeed about the variety of attacks and even defence you can apply when rolling the dice. Do you push your luck for your character's ultimate, or do you play it safe? Now all this dice rolling is complemented by some tidy card play, but this is a game that's definitely more about its overall feel than any mechanical greatness. Number 9, Jaipur. This is the pinnacle of stripped down drafting and set collection for me. And the only reason it doesn't see more table time is just because I only play it with a good lady. But what the intimate player count does bring is some friendly shared marketplace competition. It's going to be rare that you take cards from the middle just to spite the person sitting opposite you. And so the interactions are indirect enough for you to do your own thing but still feel part of a race to gobble up all those coin points you get when collecting sets of coloured cards. Taking one card for free, or swapping multiple with those in your hand, is the way you get there, and it's light decision making enough that still ticks that rewarding box. Number 8. Monolith Arena A fantasy reskin of Nurashima Hex with less expansions this may be, but rarely does a game distill so well the feel of a skirmish war game, whilst on the not so snide evokes vibes of the positional strategy you find when playing chess. You see, there isn't much space for your troops to operate, but where you do place them and in what direction is the key to winning or losing. And again, it's the tight, largely no frills gameplay that seals the deal for me. Not only that, the variable player powers found in each of the factions gives each a distinct and most importantly well balanced playstyle. The slightly unusual monoliths that allow you to snake like unravel your units across a few spaces only adds nuance to the tactical gameplay. Number 7 Blood Bowl. Ah, nostalgia in a box. 
I know I proclaim every time I talk about this game that it has the single most awesome theme in our hobby. The fact that it's absolutely bonkers and shouldn't be taken too seriously is just cherry on the top. In terms of the game, I actually took quite a while to warm to it. It always felt like a game that's almost as old as me. But dig a little deeper and you'll realise how much you and your team need to work as one and in unison to stack the odds in your favour. Do some knocking on heads and slowly matriculate that spiked ball up to the opponent's end zone. And that goes without mentioning the league play that can see your basic starting team morph into an all-star 11 that will write their names in the history books. Number 6, Battle Law 2nd Edition. Well, if Monolith Arena looks up in envy at its oldest brother's list of available expansions, Battle Law can only sit alone on its island of untapped potential. Don't get me wrong, the game started with a bang with a couple of expansion armies and reinforcement X-Packs, but then just as quickly the train broke down and nothing since. The fact that this hybrid miniature war game, based on the commands and colours historical war game system, still floats my boat is a testament to its quality set of immersive rules that start even during setup. Rarely does a game involve you so keenly, even as you're setting up the board and terrain. Range and all that jazz do an excellent job of mimicking a more traditional mini war game. Number 5. Jawlasaur Island Never have I ever been so turned around on a game's aesthetic. It looks like a colour scheme from the 80s, but when it's at the table, it somehow fits perfectly with the theme. The drafting and resource management is absolutely spot on, and again, another game that does drafting so well at two players. This isn't a mechanism that has to be played multiplayer to be fully realised. Yes, there's only so much variety in the way you build your tableau to increase your resource generation or card draw, but there's still enough going on in what is effectively a mini-game offshoot of Dinosaur Island, for this to sing a sweet song to me. Oh, and yes, Eagle Eye Johnny, this does have a solo variant. But the clue's in the bloody title, so shoot me. Number 4. Targi. Oh Targi, why do I feel you're so misunderstood? Maybe it's because you're so unassuming. Preferring to be the little ball game that completely takes you by surprise as soon as you lay this grid of cards out on the table. Tight as a drum worker placement is the aim of the game, but doing so in a way that intersects the X and Y axes is what makes this game so bloody good. It's like scaled down worker placement that somehow still manages to be ahead of its time. Combining both the gathering of resources and the actions that make use of them all on the same board may be why it's so critically lauded. That and the fact that it's almost perfect straight out of the core box. Number 3. Warhammer Underworlds Now they say the first step is honesty. Well ladies and gentlemen, I am a hex addict. I surrender myself to the mercy of the board gaming gods and seek salvation. <laughs> Do I bollocks. It's mostly standard hybrid skirmish fare in terms of movement and dice based combat where you take control of warbands and fight for objective points over the course of an all too brief three rounds. But it's the deck construction elements that really elevate this specialist title from Games Workshop to another level. At the start and finish of each player's actions you can play cards that will influence the next phase, and so this has a surprising amount of impact on your playstyle. Over and above what's already provided with the differing factions. Number 2. Unmatched. What we have here, good people, is a throwback gameplay experience that really took me by surprise. Pitting a number of different pop culture figures into a deathmatch like point to point movement arena. The opposed check card play doesn't even try and reinvent the wheel, but it still feels fresh and new somehow. Maybe it's the uber polished production. 
Maybe it's the very individualistic feel of each of the characters and their respective sidekicks. One thing's for sure, it's in that category of games that maybe shouldn't be great, but just taps into something innately fun and enjoyable. The newest game on this list, but I think it's got some longevity. Although key to that will be a steady current of new expansions. And number one, Summoner Wars. At the top of the mountain when it comes to two player action, Summoner Wars takes what quite a few games on this list have done and creates some quite disparate factions to get your grips onto. Each with their own unique playstyle and inherent traits. It pains me to say that rectangles are greater than hexes in this list, but the game is no lesser for having cards be the unit, and the back and forth be up, down, left and right. I think one thing that flies under the radar is the convenience of having all the unit data on the card you're moving around the board. It just makes for a much more seamless experience. When you factor in the strategic placing of walls, the slinging of spells and the events you can play, everything adds up to one of the best strategic combat games you can play on a flat surface. And so there you have a list that was extremely difficult to order. I had a great deal of difficulty in separating a number of these games and I love them all, but no take backs. At least not until I do this list again. And so which of these games would have made your list? And what would have been at the tippy top? Let me know all the juicy details in the comments. For now though, my name has been Benji and this is him telling you that this video has ended.